Are you a manufacturing company looking to upgrade your machining center? Look no further than Grobe's Mill and Turn 5-axis machines that are in a league of their own. With a unique retractable spindle, it virtually eliminates the chance for collisions while requiring less floor space. Our versatile machines offer more standard options with a wide range of automation, all at an affordable cost. Choose Grobe's Mill and Turn 5-axis machines. Go to grobegroup.com to get more information. Go to grobgroup.com to get more information. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Well, hello, my paranormal peeps. I'm sorry it's been so long since we've talked to you. I think we're about to move into uh, season three of our podcast. And uh, on this podcast, well, let me start with this. My name is Matt Harvey. I am the founder and lead investigator with Deep Woods Paranormal. I've been researching the paranormal professionally for about 30 years, uh, along with my wife, Amanda. Uh, we investigate ghosts, hauntings, demons, Bigfoot, UFOs, anything paranormal in nature, we, re- we research it. But recently, I have come across uh, another person who's kind of like me, who's more sensitive and more open than I am. Um, and she and her boyfriend, um, I'm not going to name them at this point in time, but if you're listening, you know who you are. Uh, we will be, hopefully, I'm going to ask them if they want to come on a podcast and we'll have a good conversation with them here uh, shortly, hopefully in the next couple of weeks or so. Anyways. So she was telling me, she was talking to me about attachments and attachments. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do. If you're in the paranormal field for long enough, you're going to get an attachment. I don't care how well protected you are. I don't care how much you say, if you, you know, if there's somebody with me, you cannot go home with me. And you say it all the way until the time you get home and you get to the door and say, listen, if there's anything with me, you cannot go home with me. You need to go back to where you came from. You're not welcome in my house. Uh, And then, you know, even if you have spiritual protection or or you just have a mental protection or by mental protection, I mean, you're just mentally strong and you mentally are thinking nothing can harm me, nothing can hurt me. Uh, Or if you have a bubble, you decide to use the bubble trick or you imagine yourself inside a bubble. Um, All these things are great, but... When you do what I've been, looks like I've sputtered all over my head. Um, when you do what I I do, and you've been doing it as long as I have, um, you come across some, I don't want to say bad, but negative, well, yeah, they, they are bad. You come across some negative entities. Uh, it's just a matter of time. As, as the longer you investigate the paranormal, the more you help people, the more chances you're going to have of encountering a negative entity. And you may not even know it's there. Um, The last case we did, I can't mention the client's name. I brought this other couple in who I just talked about a minute ago. Uh, They're both sensitives, which is awesome. Um, I asked them to come in and give me a second opinion. And I let her clear the house, which is awesome. Takes a huge burden off me. But the problem is the whole time the thing wanted to fight me. It was like, I want a full-on fight with you. I don't care about them. I just want to fight with you. So, and I can hear this. I can feel this in, in my consciousness, in my head. I can hear them kind of talking, if you will, and uh, how pissed off it was and, and stuff like that. But it took them to come to the location before I realized, okay, yes, it is something negative or demonic or whatever. Um, so sometimes, even though I've been doing this forever, um, even I need help sometimes. And 
one of the things that she said is you need to kind of close yourself off. I've been under a lot of attack lately. Um, something that people don't realize. You watch these shows on TV. Well, I'm not going to make mention any of them, but they go into locations that are said to be haunted by demons. And they go and rattle the demon's chain. They go in there and provoke and all this other stuff. And 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 90% of the time, nothing happens. And then they get home. And this is where you don't see things happening on TV. They get attacked. They get scratched. There's been a couple of people that have come back out after a show and said, hey, look, this is what happened to me. But if you're going into those locations and prov purposely provoking a negative entity, what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> I don't like those kind of cases. I absolutely hate negative cases, or if you want to call them demonic or whatever your your, your name for them is. Uh, you know, if you don't believe, and maybe it's just some kind of a apparition that people don't know about or whatever. I don't know. Whatever your beliefs are. But for me, I've been dealing these with these things since I was a teenager. I was just terrified of them as a kid. And I had multiple, multiple run-ins with them. Didn't know how to defend myself. In fact, it wasn't, and I'll give my wife credit, it wasn't until I met her that I realized, okay, you got to stand up for yourself and, and take these things on. And then after I did that, it's like a switch turned on in my head. And all of a sudden, next thing I know, I'm in control. I was the one pushing these things out of people's homes and doing stuff like that. So um, we were talking about attachments. So when you do these kind of cases, you, you deal with these negative entities, or even if you just deal with a, a spirit in a house that is mad or angry or whatever, and that happens sometimes. Um, they need something. They're upset that people can't hear them. They don't know they're dead. There's a lot of reasons spirits manifest in some way. And by manifest, I mean show themselves. You hear hear something, maybe. You see something move. You might see a, um, an orb or, an up or you know, some kind of a misty type form. But spirits manifest in lots of different ways. You Sometimes you'll hear them talk. Um, so sitting right behind me is the little doll, and I purposely brought her into the house. Um, so I'll get into her in just a minute here. But anyways, the more you deal with the, you know negative entities, the more you deal with the darker side of the paranormal, uh, the more chances for attachments you get. Me personally, I have an entity that looks like like a zombie i know exactly where this thing came from wasn't even doing anything paranormal research or anything like that uh, i had taken a break this is uh 10 no 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 eight years ago nine years ago and uh, i was a long haul trucker i pulled over onto uh, a truck stop and there was this long next to the truck stop there was a freeway and then there was um, a series of factories and buildings, and then there's a truck stop, which is normal because um, we pick up from the we would pick up from the truck stops. I'm sorry, we would pick up from the um, locations, the the offices or the buildings or whatever it was that we're picking up or delivering from. And a lot of the time, we would spend the night in or around the truck stops. So I pulled down into this cul-de-sac because I needed a place to turn around. And I'm driving a 73-foot vehicle, mind you. This is a full-on semi, big rig, and I'm driving down the road. Uh, found the cul-de-sac. It was a much larger cul-de-sac than like in a residential area. I think it was specifically made for trucks to turn around. They were charging for parking at the truck stop. So uh, I decided to park alongside um, on a curb and essentially go in and get whatever I needed and come back out. So it was kind of a sketchy area. And I was, I think this, I don't even remember what the hell I was. But I remember driving past, as I made my loop around the cul-de-sac, I remember seeing what looked like heavily armed, um, they weren't police officers, I think they were some kind of security unit at one of these factories. Barbed wire fence everywhere. Um, 
probably some kind of military contractor or something, who knows. And uh, so I, I, I came back out and as I got back out, I see this, what looks like one of the security guards start walking really strange out of the area. Uh, he walked right past the gate where the other guards were, walked down the long driveway, um, and then basically started walking towards me. And I couldn't kind of turn around and looked at him. I'm like, what in the hell? Why is this guy coming at me? And uh, the more I kind of stared at him, the more I realized he wasn't alive. He looked just, just like a zombie. I just thought it was a human spirit. I just paid him no attention. He actually ended up kind of, I was at the back of the trailer at this time. He kind of walked down the, the road and then walked towards me, started coming towards me. And then all of a sudden I turned and he turned. He turned, I turned towards him. He turned away and kind of make a made a V, if you will, a soft V, and then started walking up the road. And I never thought anything more about it. And then he, I realized he had disappeared. And he, he looked just like a normal person, but he was not normal. Let's put it that way. He was walking weird. He was dragging his left leg. Um, he had his arms kind of out a little bit, uh, shoulders hunched forward, and his face was weird looking. But he looked just like a security guard. I think he had a security guard outfit on. So I was like, okay, that's strange. I'm not sure. And uh, that's where I'm going to leave it with the government stuff. But anyways, so I got back in the truck, took off, did whatever I did. Forgot about him. Well, never really forgot about him. It's, that's one of my more unusual um, encounters with the paranormal. But... I told that story years later, but what was weird is recently when I went to have a reading with um, our new friends, she said, you know, we've come across this entity um, that looks like it's a zombie. I'm like, okay, what? Turns out it's a demon. And it was just looking, trying to look like a zombie. And I guess it spoke to them and told them a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to get into what it said. Uh, maybe if we are able to do an interview with them, they can talk more about it. But they did a banishing ritual or something. And, uh, you know, just basically, I don't know what happened to that entity. But um, I am always pretty much, I always have a bullseye on my back now because I've cleared so many places. Um, once you've cleared a location like that and you've removed, that negative energy, it doesn't just go away. Did you miss your deadline to renew your Medicaid coverage? You can still send your completed annual review form to Healthy Connections Medicaid. You may be assigned to another health plan, but you can ask to come back to First Choice within 60 days of renewed Medicaid eligibility. It's your family. It's your choice. First Choice is the right choice. Renew and choose us. Visit selecthealthofsc.com slash renew to learn more. Don't get your tinsel in a tangle. Plato's Closet in North Charleston and West Ashley can help make your holiday easier with cash for clothes. Sell us your gently used trendy styles to earn cash on the spot. We need your denim, dressy clothes, sweaters, boots, and more. Plato's Closet buys and sells sustainable styles. Earn cash to make holiday spending less stressful. Don't get your tinsel in a tangle this year. Simply get cash for your cool clothes at Plato's Closet. Plato's Closet, located in West Ashley on Sam Rittenberg Boulevard and North Charleston on Rivers Avenue. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. It sits and waits in maybe 100 cases down the road, maybe 20 cases down the road, maybe two cases down the road. Guess what you run into? That same entity. But he's learned something. It's learned something. I'm not going to say he. It has learned from the previous experience. And it knows what you're going to try and do. It knows how you're going to try and remove it. 
So you have to come up with a new way to try and get the help, the thing out of the house and, or location, you know, not necessarily homes. Sometimes it's businesses, sometimes it's vehicles, sometimes it's who knows what it is. Anyways. So yeah, I mean, these attachments, these demonic attachments or negative attachments or whatever you want to call them. Um, whoa, sorry, it's just a little windy outside. Anyways, um, so these demonic attachments, they just follow you. They consistently follow you. They never really go away. And then from time to time, they'll attack you. Uh, when we first moved here to call Bryan College Station, we rented a home. And we liked it. Nice little old home. Probably from the maybe the 20s or 30s. Somebody I could tell when we first started moving in, somebody had done something bad in one or both of the back rooms. I don't know exactly what happened in the house. I, I tried to find out some information. There was just nothing, no records, of course. Um, so when I went through and I started recording all of this, I started documenting it by leaving uh, the home security cameras out, the DVR system out like we would do at a client's. We started picking up all kinds of crazy stuff, like a man screaming for help and all this other weird noise. My friend spent the night to watch the dogs for us when we went somewhere, a man and I went somewhere, and she said she saw something crawling on the ceiling. And so when we left that house, I purposely said, if there's anything with me, you cannot come with us. You need to stay at this house. And what was interesting is the person we rented from said, wow, you guys have lived here longer than anybody else. Everybody else has just packed up and left. And, you know, a month in, two months in, three months in, whatever. We were there a year while we were waiting for this house to be built. But, yeah, just, just crazy stuff. I mean, that thing, there was something there. Even though I said you can't go with us, it must have attached itself to something that we brought with us. Originally, it started out in the garage. And it would move things around in the garage. And now it's progressed to where it's somehow made its way in the house. Even though I have, I have the house well protected. There are stones everywhere. There are crosses everywhere. I've not blessed this house. And there's a reason I don't bless this house. Uh, we like not having a whole lot of activity in the house. If once you do a blessing in a house, it becomes, let's just say, very positive or if you're irreligious, it uh, becomes like a church. And what people don't realize is that churches draw energy, entities, energy, whatever you want to call them, to them because they're a safe place where negative energy can't get to. And so once you do a blessing in a home, spirits will flee into that home. And essentially then they'll, they're the, hopefully they're going to be quiet. Most of the time you don't even know they're there. But every once in a while, you get a case where it's like, oh, crap, this house was blessed six years ago. I know exactly why you're having all the activity. And then you go in and you try and solve the issue of why are you here, blah, blah, blah. How can we help you move on, blah, blah, blah. And then you hopefully cross the spirit over or you tell them to go away or whatever you want to, you know, I don't want to get into beliefs here, but um, whatever you want to believe. So this entity followed us from this other house. Um, when we were at the other house, I mean, things would happen all the time. That thing would slam covers on me. Try, I would go to get something out of, out of the cupboard. Wham! Slam the cupboard with my hand reaching in, and I have to pull my hand back out. Um, doors would open and close on their own. Footsteps in the middle of the night. Growling. Um, dogs not wanting to come in, something gnawed at the back door one night. You could hear like the scratching. And when we looked out there, there was nothing there. So essentially, um, we basically moved out of there and brought whatever it was here. And for some reason, that thing is just very attached to me and really wants it wants my attention or wants something from me. I don't know what it wants, but it attacks me all the time. It like knocks stuff out of my hands. 
Um, for example, the lo last night we were in the bathroom in our in our room, which is across from the kitchen, and we heard do 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 do. I'm like, what is that? I looked around. I'm like, okay, one, two, three, four dogs, two cats. Okay, there's nobody out there, <laughs> at least that we could see. So I got there, and the lid of the trash can had literally been ripped off and thrown on the floor. And I don't know. Anyways, but I wanted to talk about attacks. So, I mean, I've had the other day, and this is a couple days before this, the lid of the trash can, uh, a glass. Thank God I left the cupboard shut. I went to open the cupboard, and I saw a glass start to move, and I closed the cupboard, and this thing literally smashed. It's not just through, but smashed the um, glass against the um, inside of the cupboard door to the point where it flew open and then the glass just fell straight down and shattered. As it, came, as it hit the door, it shattered everywhere, throwing glass all over. And of course, mind you, I'm barefoot. So, and then the dogs are running around next to me. And so I had to issue, I had to sh shoo them away. And then I had to carefully maneuver my way out of there to go get some shoes on and clean up the mess. But uh, yeah, these things, I mean, when you mess with the paranormal, it messes back with you. For me, it, they started messing with me when I was a kid and then it basically progressed into me being more interested in them and then turn the tables on them. And then now it's just like, okay, whatever. <laughs> just to the point where I just shake my head and go, okay, all right. So um, even if you have good spiritual protection, just be very careful when you go into these locations. If you go into a location, you just don't feel comfortable there, then leave. But uh, don't ever, well, I can't tell you say that. I would highly recommend that if you go into a location, especially if you know that it has had some negative past history or you know that it possibly has a negative entity or demon hiding out i would highly recommend that you, you either bless yourself or do some kind of mental protection or whatever you want to do protect yourself from these things and then highly recommend that you clear yourself when you leave don't provoke i'm sorry let me try that again i would highly recommend you don't provoke when you go into these locations um, especially if you've never done anything with the paranormal before I'm seeing more and more people get into the paranormal and think they know what they're doing. And, you know, <laughs> that's when sometimes I get called to other paranormal investigators' homes. Um, yeah, we went here and did this and we were kind of mean and then we came home and now this is happening. I can't tell you how many calls I've gotten from people. How do I fix this? <laughs> you know, you're just opening yourself up. So, Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you guys so, so much for subscribing and liking our channel. Um, if you haven't downloaded this episode, I'd appreciate it if you would. And uh, again, thank you guys so much for your support. We'll get back on these podcasts here, uh, more normal um, schedule here coming up. Uh, just a lot of stuff going on right now. My work is a mess. Uh, because of the economy and because of other things going on. So I'm working odd hours. I'm working, you know, shifts here and shifts there that I normally wouldn't work. And so that's really interfering with everything paranormally. So yeah, we're going to have some new episodes coming up on our, our YouTube channel as well. Uh, I think we're going to get back into some Bigfoot research. Uh, we'll be talking Bigfoot here uh, probably tomorrow, probably live long, yeah probably put that podcast out tomorrow or Thursday and then um, I'll be doing, I'm not sure if it's going to be, again, I'm, I've talked about this before, but I'm not sure if it's going to be um, a survival podcast or, or if it's going to be a paranormal survivor podcast or whatever. I'm going to be doing some kind of other podcast. I'm not sure if I'm going to put it on these, with these podcasts or put it by itself. Um, here in the next week or two, I want to get that out. I want to start doing that and we'll start doing some episodes with that. 
so if you're into survival or being out in the woods or camping or hiking or anything like that, I'll be covering a lot of subjects. Uh, there's a lot of stuff going on right now. Uh, maybe you do talk about a little bit of prepping. Amanda and I are not preppers, but there's a lot of people that are prepping for whatever they think is coming at this point in time. Um, so, yeah, you guys, uh, you guys stay safe out there. It's kind of a crazy world right now. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. <gasps> no, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW group. Void prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.